Hi, in this particular video we're going to be looking at solving a simultaneous, parasimultaneous equations. This is quite a tricky one, we're going to be using quite a lot of algebra and also some fraction work as well. So uh, please do have a go at this, it is aimed at about grade 7 plus I would have thought on GCSE. So start the video, have a go um, and then compare your solution. Okay, so um, the first thing I've got is I've got um, a value of 3y equals 5 minus 2x. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm actually going to divide through both sides by 3. So therefore, I'm going to write that particular equation as y equals 5 over 3 minus 2x over 3. Now the reason I've done that is because it'll make it a little bit easier when I feed it into this equation to work with, um, I wouldn't suggest you write it as 5 minus 2x over 3. I don't think that's going to work particularly well for you because you need to be able to work with the individual fractions. Okay, so I'm going to take this value of y and I'm going to plug it straight into this value and this value over here. So this is where it's going to get a little bit complicated, but um, on the left hand side I'm going to get 5 over 3 minus 2 over 3x and I'm going to square that so I'm going to multiply it by itself. Okay, And that's going to be equal to x which is this x here multiplied again by 5 over 3 minus 2 over 3x. So this is the value of y that came from here and then I'm going to add 5 to it. Okay, so all I've done at this particular point is I've taken this value of y and I've substituted it back into the equation. Okay, so this is really where you need to feel fairly comfortable with working with fractions. And what I'm going to do initially at least is I'm going to work on the left hand side. So I'm going to deal with this before I deal with this. Okay, so on the left hand side what I've got is my first multiplication which is 5 thirds positive 5 thirds times positive 5 thirds. Okay, so that's going to give me 25 over 9. Okay, then I'm going to have 5 thirds multiplied by minus 2 thirds of x. Okay, so that's going to give me minus 10 over 9x. Okay, hopefully that's all right with you. Then I've got exactly the same when I deal with this number here or this fraction here so I've got minus two-thirds x times 5 over 3 is again going to give me minus 10 over 9 x and then I'm going to get minus two-thirds x times minus two-thirds x well remember a minus times a minus is a positive so I'm going to get plus 4 over 9 x squared Okay, so what that's dealt with is this particular part of the equation here. Okay, so what I do now is I'm going to have a look at just tidying this up a little bit. So the main thing is I've got this minus 10 over 9x minus 10 over 9x. So I'm going to rewrite this as 25 over 9 minus 20 over 9x plus 4 over 9x squared. So what I've done then is I've dealt with the left hand side of the equation. Now I need to deal with the right hand side of the equation which is this thing over here. Okay, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply what's in the brackets by x. So I'm going to get 5 over 3 times x, well that's 5x over 3, minus 2 thirds x times x is minus 2 over 3x squared. Remember that's still in brackets and then I'm going to add 5 to it. Okay, so what happens then is I get these two balanced equations. So I get 5x over 3 minus 2 over 3x squared plus 5. Now in order to solve this what I need to do is make one of the sides equal to zero and this is where it does get a little bit more complicated to be able to do this because what I've got to do is bring the like terms together and also then add fractions so it's just going to be a little bit complicated what I'm aiming to do is I'm aiming to do it step by step and the first thing I'm going to deal with is this 
four ninths x squared and this minus two thirds x squared. So if I brought the minus two thirds x squared over to the left hand side, I'm going to get effectively four over nine x squared plus two over three x squared and that's effectively my x squared term that I want. So let's have a look at the ones that deal with the x on its own. So I've got minus 20 over 9x and then I've also got here 5x over 3. So again we've got to be a little bit careful because my next term is going to be minus 20 over 9x and then because I'm bringing this over to the left hand side, it's going to be minus 5 over 3x. Put that in brackets. Okay. My last little bit is I've got this and then this over here. Okay. So, again, I'm going to bring this over to the left hand side. I've already got 25 over 9. And I'm going to minus 5 because I've brought this plus 5 over to the left hand side so it's going to be minus 5 and then at long last I make that equal to 0. And then really it's just a case now of tidying this up and making it look a little bit better. Alright, so again step by step when I'm adding fractions together I need to make sure the denominator is the same. So the x squared, rather than 2 thirds x squared, is going to be 6 over 9 x squared. So that's one of them. This one here, I've got minus 20 over 9 x. And rather than minus 5 over 3, I'm going to get minus 15 over 9 x. And then this one here, I've got plus 25 over 9 and rather than writing 5 I'm going to write 45 over 9 which is exactly the same but it means then that I can take those two fractions away from each other and that equals 0 again. Alright so it's starting to make sense now hopefully and by bringing everything together now I can make this thing look a little bit tidier. Okay so 4 over 9 plus 6 over 9 is 10 over 9 x squared. Great. Well, I've got my first x squared term. Now I've got minus 20 minus 15. So plus minus 20 minus 15 is going to be minus 35. Plus and a minus together is minus 35 over 9 x. Okay, that's great. Got my coefficient of x. And then finally, I've got 25 minus 45. Well, that's going to be minus 20. So I've got minus 20 over 9, and that again equals 0. OK, now the good thing about this is that I can multiply through now by 9. So actually, I can just multiply both sides by 9. So I can get rid of all of these denominators and 0 times 9. Is still 0 so I could write this as 10x squared minus 35x minus 20 equals 0. Okay right so we're starting to get hopefully a little bit further forward with this. Now I don't really like dealing with such big numbers so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply through, I'm going to divide through by 5 so I can write this whole equation as 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 equals 0. And really the job now is to factorise that. Okay, now if I factorise that, um, there's a couple of ways I could do it. I could just do it by trial and error or I could use the quadratic formula if I wanted to. However, what I've spotted is if I do 2 times minus 4, I'm going to get minus 8. Okay, and the two numbers that when I multiply them together to make minus 8 and I add them together to get minus 7 is going to be plus 8 and minus 1. So plus 8 times minus 1 is minus 8 and also plus 8 plus minus 1 is going to be minus 7. Okay, so rather than writing it like this I'm going to write this as 2x squared minus 8x plus 1x minus 4 equals 0. Now this is a technique that usually works with these sorts of questions, but you need to have uh, confidence in, in working through this sort of technique. Um, 
I, I do believe it is taught at schools. There are some teachers I've come across and some students I've come across that can do this quite well. But if you're not sure about what we're going to do now, um, by all means use the, the quadratic formula or trial and error. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorise the first two terms. Now, if I factorise the two terms, I end up with 2x, x minus 4. And that's the first two terms. Okay. The second two terms, I'm going to factorise for 1. And I'm going to get x minus 4 equals 0. Now, we're in a situation where I've got common factors to both. So actually, I can write that as x minus 4 multiplied by 2x plus 1 equals 0. All right. So now I've finally got my final factorization where I can say that if x minus 4 equals 0, therefore x must equal positive 4. And if 2x plus 1 equals 0, then x must equal minus a half. And that would be the answer to this question. So it has been quite tricky to actually get to this point, but hopefully, if we just go through it very briefly, hopefully you'll be able to see that what I did is I created a equation for y. And then I took that equation, or I took that value, and I plugged it straight into this equation here. Then I squared it, which is quite tricky to do because it's got fractions, and I got that. And then I tidied it up a little bit. That was on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I multiplied it out, and again, I got those. So then it was a case of being able to make this whole... Um, equation equal to zero. And the way I chose to do that is I brought these over towards the left-hand side. So if I bring 5 over 3x over towards the left-hand side, I have to make it minus 5 over 3x. Okay. Similarly with plus 5, when I brought it over to the left-hand side, it became minus 5. And then really it was a case of just using my knowledge of fractions to be able to um, add or take away fractions. And I ended up with this. And then I multiplied through by 9 to end up with this. And then I decided I didn't like that too much. I was just going to divide through by 5 to get me that. And then as I say, it was really just a case of going off into either doing it by this method or trial and error or a quadratic formula and then hopefully you would end up with a solution like that. Okay, I hope that's been useful to you. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you. Have a look at some of the other playlists on the site and it will give you quite a lot more practice with these sorts of questions and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.